our uh, last answer is through Mustafa Farouki of the Lab Lab for Architecture. Mustafa founded the Lab Lab for Architecture in Brooklyn to reinvent potential outputs of architecture design. This work deal with relationship between support and being supported in very interesting way through mechanical movement, phenomenological change, architecturalization of human body and geomorphosis of elements. Recent work include a celebratorium, a supportive housing scheme for the unmarried, unloved, or otherwise permanently alone, and intake facility for an anonymous uh, client in transit between heaven and earth. Mustafa is son of a prison uh, psychiatrist and a poet. He received BA in architecture and MR from Columbia University, and he holds an M MA in history of art from the School of Oriental and African Studies in London. Currently, he is participating in Open Sessions, a two year hybrid exhibition residency program hosted by Drawing Center. Please welcome Mustafa Faruqi. that introduction. And I'd like to start by uh, thanking the Architectural League for this opportunity, particularly Anne, uh, Matt, Lindsay, and Katerina, not just for your help with the exhibition outside, but also for all the conversations that we've had in the past few days. It's really so thrilling to have people who ask you about your work and are sincerely listen to your answer. I um, mean, I kind of actually really live for things like that, so I appreciate that. Also, particularly Matt, I know this is your second to last day and you probably year in, year out been wanting to come up here and sabotage the entire program. So you have about 19 minutes to do that and make that real. Um, I'd like to also thank a lot of the, the allies, the professors and teachers, friends who, who have supported me over, over the years. Um, particularly, I'd like to thank Madeline Schwartzman, who's here, who uh, uh, was a teacher of mine at Columbia University and has now become a friend and an ally. I'd like to thank Joe Moore, who also has been uh, so supportive of my work. And um, I think also I would, should thank uh, a mentor and tour mentor, Jonathan Marvel and Marvel Architects, for giving me a place to land over the past two years while I've been flying around doing some of the stuff I'm going to show you today. Uh, I'd like to thank the Lower Manhattan Cultural Council and the Drawing Center. Uh, for offering space to work and also space to show my work, which in New York is really invaluable. And last but not least, I want to thank my family, my, my mom and dad, who are my inspiration, and also my brother and my sister, Karna and Shabnam, who I love very much and who have never said no to me, and this is the result of that, what you're about to see. Um, okay, the project I want to talk to you about tonight is... Um, one that I've been working on for a while, although it's, it's very far from finished. It's actually, I'm just going to show you kind of things that are very diffuse. It's a constellation of drawings and images and text. And I think it's a good way for me to try and sort of come up with a good narration for it and also a good way for you to maybe see what my process is, how I work, what I'm inspired by, and where I take that inspiration. Um, so I am just going to start. We have a prologue from the client, actually. The client's name is Gabriel. And it reads like this. Come, don't sit around and masturbate. Today's your day to my great angels. Come, don't hesitate to change your fate. Don't wait till it's too late, angels. Come, you can live forever and never even ever live, angels. Come, because if you don't, it's you yourself. You'll never ever live to forgive, angels. Come, you see, oh, sorry. Come, you see the night's fight for the light of day. That's the fight of the angels. So come, let's make tonight the night we make right the plight of the angels. Come, let God alone in heaven yearn for the angels. Come, let heaven, lifeless and frozen, burn for the angels. A disclaimer by way of a, a historical precedent. This is Mansur al-Halaj. Uh, he's a 10th century Persian writer and thinker belonging to the devotional Sufi tradition of Islam. Mansur became the, uh, famous for his expression of love for God, and his sermons demonstrated a devotion that was ecstatic, but also dangerous. His most famous proclamation is evidence of his desire to be annihilated in his love for the creator. Anna al-Haq, Anna al-Haq, I am God, I am the truth. Um, unfortunately for Mansur, the ruling establishment was dubious. He was accused of blasphemy, sentenced to death, and hanged. Jumping ahead 900 years, 
we have someone who you probably know, India Ari. Uh, she's a, a hip hop artist and a poet. Much like Mansoor Halaj, India encourages her audience to find beauty and truth in themselves. And one of her songs, I am light, I am light. I am divinity defined. I am the God on the inside. I am a star, a piece of it all. I am light. So some might argue that Mansoor al-Halaj and India Ari are both reaching for a divine power that exists inside all of us. Other might say that they're just batshit crazy, conceited, or both. Tonight, I'd like to offer another possibility. Could it be that both India and Mansoor are expressing the words of a distant but powerful voice? an anonymous, persistent voice that is desperate to be heard. Uh, the project I'm talking about today is a response to an RFP. It's an intake facility for an anonymous client. It's located on Governor's Island. Um, it's a client that's actually in a process of migration from heaven to earth. Uh, and the facility is needed to process this client and register them. So it's similar to Ellis Island up till the point when it was closed in the early 20th century and not too different from uh, similar structures that exist at Newark Liberty Airport and Kennedy Airport. Uh, the client has very specific concerns. One, they have wings. Uh, and so here we've had to kind of come up with ways to figure out how to deal with their wings and other aspects of their physicality through diagramming. Um, they also land and take off. And so we have to have sort of very uh, particular routes for them to come in and go because of that. We can't ever forget F, F, and E. We're going to do bespoke, uh, bespoke chairs for all of the clients. These are two of the clients, Michael and Raphael. Um, and so there's not just physical concerns that they have. There's also existential concerns that are going to play an important part of the design. One is that they have no free will. They have no uh, gender, no sexual desire. Um, and they also uh, are caught up in permanent servitude. And that's something that's been documented and it's part of our research. You can see here on the left, we have a painting by Marc Chagall. This is one of our clients helping the Israelites cross the Red Sea by parting it, which is no easy task. In the middle, a uh, painting by Karl Bloch, which is one of the clients um, comforting a celebrity who's pretty down. And then all the way on the right, we have one of our clients who is uh, delivering a message to the Prophet Muhammad in the middle of the Arabian desert, which probably isn't that much fun. All of it uncompensated. Um, so obviously we have to start with a conditions assessment. And what we wanted to do was think about this kind of this forced labor and how we can use that kind of, or all of the conditions that I've just talked about, and kind of bring that into an assessment that'll help us move forward with the design. So we're honing in on a particular historical incident. That is the, the night journey of the Prophet Muhammad that's been written about and rendered artistically for hundreds of years. It's the journey that uh, the Prophet Muhammad made from the Arabian Peninsula to Jerusalem to heaven. And it's been documented on the left, you see from the Safavid dynasty, uh, there's an image of it, and, and the same scene 200 years later from, uh, from northern India. It's important to us because our clients are quite visible in this, so we want to see what their role was so we can kind of figure out what's going on and how we can use that to help our own master plan. So I'm just going to quickly take you through some pages of, of our conditions report. Um, here, actually, from the text, it's the Sahih al-Bukhari, al and it describes Muhammad's journey. By the way, the Prophet Muhammad always appears with a green attache to help you uh, in the drawings. Um, two vessels, one containing wine and the other milk, were presented to him in Jerusalem. He took the cup of milk. The angel Gabriel said, Pra praise be to God who guided you to the right path. If you had taken the wine, your nation would have gone ast astray. So that's all good for Muhammad, he passed the test, but obviously you can see our clients here, it's not, beverage service isn't easy at that kind of altitude. Um, here he arrives at the, at the first level of heaven, and he's meant to be greeted by Adam and Eve, who are busy doing their thing in the upper left-hand corner. And as you can see, it's, it's our clients who are busy vacuuming and cleaning up to sort of prepare for Muhammad's arrival from the Dome of the Rock in Jerusalem. Further on, at the second level of heaven, we see in the conditions report, um, this is where uh, the Prophet Muhammad meets the Prophet John the Baptist and also the Virgin Mary. Um, at, but we see in back of house, uh, the client Raphael is preparing uh, a holy water infused herbal tea. And meanwhile, uh, uh, the client Gabriel has actually just become a couch to sit on. 
And it's not all bad because the Virgin Mary here is comforting Gabriel, so there is a little bit of hope there. Um, uh, later that day, we see John the Baptist, Muhammad, and Jesus Christ broing it out in a hot tub, another situation that's supported by our clients. Uh, and lastly, the prophet Moses leads the prophet Muhammad to the last stage of heaven where there's a massive tree. It's called the Sidra tree. It's the biggest tree in the universe. And in order to get inside, guess who has to move that tree back and forth? So we basically... Um, We've kind of looked at these situations and come up with a conclusion or, or sort of at the end of the report that, that helps us, or I'm just going to read it to you right now so you get an idea of how it ends. As you know, existing conditions reports always rhyme. Uh, the heavens are thick tonight, dense with discontent. Despair fills an air colored with lament. The heavens are thick tonight, anger beyond belief. The clouds cry aloud, a thunder crash of grief. Among the angels rancor for happiness denied, for wanton prohibitions, for dreams ossified, for fantasies deferred, deleted aspirations, love foolishly exchanged for worthless masturbations. They're done with servitude, a life degenerate. They've had all they can take of God and his bullshit. See them gathered there at heaven's door, challenging a circumstance that they've come to abhor. The edge of paradise is where we see them wait. The heavens are thick tonight. The angels are at the gate. All right, so let's talk about vertical circulation. Uh, how, how is the client going to get from heaven down to Governor's Island? Um, one thing is adaptive reuse. There's loads of gates that are available for people who are leaving Earth to go to heaven. Um, these gates uh, have been around literally forever. So we can actually sort of look at them and figure out how we can maybe try and improve them um, and gussy them up a little bit and, and make them better for the clients to use. Um, so again, sustainability is important. Uh, here is another type of gate. Again, they're one way, but we're trying to make the gates two ways so that you can enter and exit. Um, we're also really borrowing from the, the language of ferries and ferry terminals and landings and slips because that's so much part of the imaginary of Governor's Island. And so we've created a, a sky ferry for our client to, um, to leave heaven and come down closer to the earth. And here's a landing for that ferry where it can dock and then the client can safely exit. Uh, here's an elevation of that. Um, and some of the signs also appear in Spanish. So. Uh, here, also, another important bit of the project is a constellation of hubs around Governor's Island because the, the clients, they have to be processed and vetted. In fact, they have to be extremely vetted. So there's a chance that they could be waiting at these, at these hubs for days, months, or even years. And so they have to be quite comfortable. We've um, designed one for uh, the tippy top of the Williamsburg Bridge, um, and that's where the holding area would be. Um, and that's where this, you can see that's where it sort of snugly fits in there between the tower. Again, here's the disembarkation point. And then you enter into this really nice comfort station which has uh, fountains and trees and things like that and is a place of relaxation. What it also has, this one's actually held up by jets and this one's held up by balloons. And what it also has is uh, it has these little cabins where the clients can go and reflect, write letters, write postcards, make phone calls. And it turns out that the clients are actually using these little phone stations to make one last call to God. Um, and these phone calls or letters to God, they're actually kept in a secure server. And at some point, they will finally be delivered to God when it's safe in heaven. At least that's what we thought would happen. But it turns out. Um, so it turns out that, that uh, these messages have actually been leaked, and I have a copy of, of some of these messages that I'm actually going to, if you don't mind, read to you. Uh, and you'll notice that these people, that, or sorry, the, the client, the users, they talk with a particular lisp and they have a particular accent, so you can kind of figure out what they're saying and even join in if you so desire. So here's one message. Everything I gave to you, and I said, Allah, Allah, you made me a slave to you, and I said, Allah, Allah. Day and night I flew the skies, and I said, Allah, Allah. I waited on your terse replies, and I said, Allah, Allah. 
I dreamed of things I fantasized, and I said, Allah, Allah. Incessantly, I said goodbyes, and I said, Allah, Allah. I thought without you, I can't cope, and I said, Allah, Allah. I turned my face away from hope, and I said, Allah, Allah. When times were good, I bowed my head, and I said, Allah, Allah. When times were bad, I cried in bed, and I said, Allah, Allah. You had bad days, I bore the brunt, and I said, Allah, Allah. You made me feel a worthless cunt, and I said, Allah, Allah. For me, denied was every plea, and I said, Allah, Allah. For Moses, though, you split the sea, and I said, Allah, Allah. You told me you're the only one, and I said, Allah, Allah. Then came Mary's bastard son, and I said, Allah, Allah. You said, Muhammad's my new fave, and I said, Allah, Allah. Go find him in some desert cave, and I said, Allah, Allah. They asked me, who has wronged you, and I said, Allah, Allah. I'm leaving him, and they said, who? And I said, Allah, Allah. Access. Um, so I'm going to take you now to the part on Governor's Island where they're actually sort of going to arrive. Uh, here's the bit of the island that we're working on, the northern bit. Here's our master plan. And I'm going to start right here with uh, this is the, um, the, bat the Brooklyn Battery Tunnel Ventilation Tower. And this makes a good spot for the control tower that's going to help these clients land at Governor's Island without all crashing into each other. There'll be trained government officials working there. Uh, there's two landing points for the client. One is above Castle William. It's brightly lit, so it can be seen at night. There's a, a, a gate for each arrival. And there's another uh, landing point above the Island Post Hospital. Here. Um, and this one's actually pretty special because here we've designed a, a sky deck where you, where visitors can actually go and see it. So you go to Governor's Island, you ride that like massive stupid tricycle that everybody has to ride when they're there, and you have the cotton candy. And then when you're done with all of that, you can pay a little bit of money and go up these escalators, and then you can sit in that spot right there, and you can watch all of these, and watch the clients sort of coming down, and that must be an amazing sight. Obviously, you'd have to wear glasses, otherwise you'd go blind. <laughs> um, okay, so moving on to the issue of transvalence, which is something that I've trademarked. That's, that's sort of a, a tra traveling in between states, and it could be a mortality versus living forever, or it could be ground versus earth. Um, and so that's something that I had to really think about in terms of how we represent the inside. Uh, because we can render out the outside any way we want, but showing the inside is actually more complicated, especially the point where the humans uh, and the clients meet each other for the first time. What does that actually look like? And I was thinking a little bit about um, the idea of the abject, of something that is recognizable to you yet completely unfamiliar, something that's been in your memory for your whole life and yet you don't, when you see it, you have no idea what it is. This is a painting by, by Sima. It's showing one of our clients, Raphael, meeting Tobias. And so it's that moment of, of irrecognition and recognition at the same time. Um, kind of like seeing something you're familiar with here and again, something vaguely familiar but unknown. And so I'm using drawing as a way of showing that. Um, this is a, a client scanner channel, and I'm taking an oblique, an isometric, and then a diametric projection, and trying to composite them so that when we put them all together, we start to barely recognize something, but at the same time, it's unfamiliar or vague. So these are experiments I did with that. Then again, other things that'll be sort of littered around the facility, a window panel, a banquette, an identification booklet, and sort of, kind of compositing these different projections to see uh, if there's some third thing that might emerge. How does this work with the design of the actual facility? Well, if we took a slice through concourse A, I think maybe it'll look something like this. There's like, a, we have oblique projection and also diametric, and there's some third thing that starts to emerge from that. Maybe we want to zoom in to one of the, one of the gates, and so maybe that's this. These are two different projections, and yet a third thing kind of starts to appear. And if we zoom in even more to the door, and here we can see how we have, you know, there's one projection, the oblique going like this, which is showing the client's entry, and then there's another projection, the diametric, showing the circulation of the guards and the army that are going to be sort of the human content of the facility. 
Uh, here's some more experiments I did with mechanical, and the one on the right is actually an ortho orthogonal view combined with an oblique. More mechanical, this time with perspective and an axonometric combined. Um, and I'm just going to quickly take you through these in the interest of time. Uh, this is a, a tower above the, the old library where the clients will be further processed. You can see the transvalence though kind of happening inside. Uh, here's a more detailed view. And then on the right, you can kind of see these people who are in the observation tower, what they're actually looking out at or an idea of what that might look like. There's also a little fun center with dancers for the employees. Um, and this is uh, where it would be from the outside. Okay, egress. Uh, so once the client has gone through processing, they will then land on the earth for the first time. However, before that happens, they have one, absolutely one, and only one last chance to turn back and go to heaven. And here's some signage showing that that, that point is approaching. And here we have a decision point. It's like a marketing meeting. There's a no, a, a, a go, or a no go. And you can either go down towards uh, where the ground is, or you have one last chance to, to go back up through that, that travel or that travelator, which goes back up to the exit area. Again, if you decide to go down, you would go through this ramp, touch the ground. And if you want to go back to heaven, you have to go through this set of uh, this exit barrier where there'll be personnel from heaven waiting there. They're probably going to be pretty pissed off. They'll re-register you, and then you can make your way. Oh, this is a detail of the exit barrier. Then you can make your way back up to heaven. And so, let's see here. And then that's the outside of that, the chute that goes back up into the sky. This is the point here where you would finally touch the ground for the first time if you decided to stay. Okay, epilogue. Um, so you've been noticing that actually we've been, we have our own media that we use to design, but there's an outside media, there's newspapers and magazines that are kind of showing a different scenario with what's happening with this facility and kind of the public debate about it. And uh, so that's going to come up in a second. One thing I wanted to talk about also in the epilogue is, although we're ending now, this is actually where the project kind of begins, because to, to actually enjoy life on Earth, the clients are going to experience two things that they've never had before, and those are money and sex. So we'll start with the more important one. We have created right here uh, a, a facility that actually attaches genitalia to the client. And what they do is they slide in through this slot horizontally, and then the genitalia actually just gets attached to them through like a baking process. And because of all the heat, because of all the heat that that releases, you've had to fill the top with cold water. Um, and then when, when the client finally emerges, they can actually, there's these, these little cubicles we've made where they can test out or take their new bits for a test drive. Um, and here's one of them. You can see actually that things aren't perfect. There's nothing perfect. They haven't left a perfect world and they haven't arrived in a perfect world either. So that's an important thing to remember. Here's another one of, this, of the suites. And then here's another one. Um, and here's a different type of cubicle. This is one where the client can open the door, go in completely by themselves, shut the door, sit down, and learn how to use a cash register. Because, because not only are they gonna be able to have sex, they're gonna to have to make money and they'll probably have to join the service sector. And so another part that comes much later is this service sector orientation center. And this brings us full circle because we started talking about the labor and the tasks these clients have to do up in, up in heaven and they're not making any money and they have to live forever, here they'll be doing almost the same tasks. They'll be making minimum wage and they get to die. <laughs> when, you combine, when you combine money and sex, obviously there's gonna be advertising and there's loads of advertising that we have available. If you're interested in a slot, you can see me afterwards. And so now I'm just gonna close so I've said that it's not going to be a perfect world, and yet the, the protagonist who we started with, which is Client Gabriel, is still adamant and still wants to go at any cost. And so um, he's issued a statement to his comrades, 
and it's become part of an addendum. So those of you keeping track, this is addendum number one. You say you fly high, you have all you desire. You think you're high now, I'll take you higher, come with me. Your world is so dry, I'll make it perspire. I got the juice that you require, come with me. Let go of heaven, make God a pariah. He may not be dead, but he needs to retire, come with me. I know you're scared, I know you're tired, what you need is hope, I'll be your supplier, come with me. You can be Luke, I'll be Princess Leia. We'll both strike back with our empire, come with me. I'm here to help, I'm here to help you. I can't get, oh sorry, I'm missing a line here. Let's see, I'll go to the next one. Time's running out, your situation is dire. Make up your mind, it's down to the wire, come with me. They'll tell you I'm crazy, they'll tell you I'm crazy, they'll call me a liar, why would I lie? Don't be a denier, come with me. It's not a joke, it's not satire, it's no sweet, sweet fantasy, baby, my name's not Mariah, come with me. And remember, remember, before you piss on my hot fire, I am the truth, I am light, I am the Messiah, come with me. Thank you. <laughs>